y'all and welcome to the Crazy Sock Lady YouTube channel. My name is Kay and this is my channel where I chat about all of my knitting and crocheting adventures. So today I have a fun little video for you guys, a question and answer. So I asked, I think it was last week um, on Instagram for questions that you guys had. So I had quite a few. I'm going to go through as many of them as I can this morning. I've got the boys up and moving, they're having their breakfast. So I'm gonna record this for you guys and then head in to start schoolwork with them. So we will just jump right in. Um, first, I'm gonna let you know if you're coming across this video and this is your first time here, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as The Crazy Sock Lady. And we do have a group for this podcast channel over on Ravelry. That's where knit alongs, sometimes giveaways, there's a recipe thread, scrappy Sunday thread, all kinds of fun stuff. So head over and join us if you haven't already. And I will put links to everywhere that you can find me right down below this video in the down bar. So like I said, I had quite a few questions come in. So I went through and I put them all on my computer um, in an easier way to kind of see them and go through them. So we will just jump right in and start answering questions. I had some knitting related ones, some not knitting related. So there's going to be kind of a mix of everything. So the first question, I had this one quite a bit for various methods of knitting in the round. It's how do you prevent ladders? Some people ask with magic loops, some ask with DPNs. So my biggest tip that I can give for avoiding ladders is when you come across, whether you're doing it magic loop or you're doing DPNs, you start your new needle, whichever method you're doing, the first instinct can be to pull that first stitch tight to avoid a ladder, but you actually wanna focus more on the second stitch and you don't wanna yank it super duper tight, but knit your first stitch on the needle is normal. When you get to that second stitch, pull it just a little bit like tighten up your tension a bit on that second stitch. And it just kind of becomes the norm in your, what you do, you don't even think about it. I do it now without even thinking. I always tighten up that second stitch a little bit more. So give that a try and see if that, that helps. When did you start knitting and who taught you? I had this question quite a bit, different variations of it. Um, I started knitting, let's see, Wyatt is 10. He'll be 11 this July. And I started knitting when I was pregnant with Wyatt. So it's been quite a while. <laughs> um, who taught me? I taught myself. I had a book. I actually probably, yes, I see it. Let me grab it. So I taught myself from a book. We lived in West Virginia at the time. And my sister-in-law had actually started knitting. And I thought, well, I can do that. <laughs> So I went to Crafts 2000, which was one of the local craft stores there, and picked up a book and some needles and yarn and got started. So this is a book that I learned from, Better Homes and Gardens, one, two, three, knit. You can see it's been scribbled on. I let someone borrow it one time and their toddler scribbled on it. But I still have this book. I don't think I'll ever get rid of it. This is where I learned to knit. It goes through casting on everything. So I just learned from a book. That's how I learned YouTube. I don't know if YouTube was really a thing back then. It totally could have been, but we did not have internet at our house. We didn't have internet. We didn't have cables. So I learned from a book that I picked up at the craft store. What are your favorite nine inch circulars for knitting socks? So I looked and I don't have any that are not on a project. So, or actually I might somewhere, but I think they're on a project bag. Anyways, I have this nine inch circular sock going and these are the needles I'm using. They are Chow Gu with the red cord. And I would definitely say these are my favorite nine inch circulars. I've tried quite a few and it's not that I don't like any. I don't have any that I'm like, oh, I would never use those again, I don't think. But these are definitely my favorite. The join is super smooth. I like the needles. I like the cable. So Chow Gu nine inch circulars are my favorite. And then someone asked, they said a few episodes back, you had great wrappers for gift knits, but I can't seem to find that episode. Can you let me know what it was? 
these are the ones I have another one but I think I think I've used both of those actually so these kind of labels they have a ton of them they're by the rusted stitch and you just wrap them around like if you have a pair of socks or dishcloths you can wrap it around them and then put care instructions and to and from and they have ton of different things for the front and their shop I believe it's on Etsy someone asked was it scary for you when you first put yourself out there on YouTube yes <laughs> very much so I am not someone that I ever thought, I can't remember which family member it was of mine. One of my cousins, I think they were like, you were like the last one of the family that I thought would be someone that would do what you're doing. I'm like, yep, that's, yeah, I never would have guessed because I am not like outgoing in that way at all to like want to be someone who I hate talking in front of people. I yeah, that's just not me. I'm very quiet. It's very scary. <laughs> Sometimes I still get nervous about things that I put out. Um, yeah, it just depends. I still get nervous. And I had quite a few questions about, because I know there was another question on here too. Where did I get my glasses? I actually don't have them on today because I'm trying out some new contacts from the eye doctor. But my glasses, um, I got them last year at my eye doctor here in Arizona. They are the brand GX by Gwen Stefani, which I'm not, I'm not a huge Gwen Stefani fan, but I saw those glasses and loved them. So they are, they're like a raspberry on the top and they kind of go into a dark gray at the bottom. Why it actually helped me pick them out, but they're GX by Gwen Stefani. Someone asked about our cats. They ask, do our cats go outside? If not, is there a reason? Predators or are they just house cats? So they're definitely house cats. We don't allow our cats outside. We have taken or attempted to take them outside on a leash. Um, just thought that, especially for Calvin, that would be good to get some energy out, but we don't let them roam the neighborhood. Our cats when I was a kid used to roam the neighborhood and it almost always ended up badly. They would get hit by a car or something would get a hold of them or, so no, they're definitely inside cats. Um, we have coyotes around here. We have, we live in a neighborhood that's, you know, we have neighbors all around us, right? We're on the street, like, nope, they're inside cats. I could see that ending very badly and making for a very heartbroken Wyatt, so. Do you make socks for your husband? Yes, I have made him many, many socks and he loves them. Do you like knitting sleeves? I don't mind it. I don't know. I've never really been like, everyone always talks about sleeve island. I've never really felt like I'm on sleeve island. I don't, I don't mind it. I just think of them like socks and I love knitting socks. So I don't mind sleeves. Do you prefer cuff down over toe up and why? Yes, I prefer cuff down over toe up. I, that's just what I've always done. That's, I don't know that there's really a reason that I prefer it. It's just what feels more natural to me with knitting a sock. It's how I learned. I've done toe up socks before. I've just never really felt like I've, it's something I want to do all the time. I just really prefer knitting them cuff down and then kitchenering that toe. I get a satisfaction out of that. So I just really enjoy cuff down. What's the thing you miss most while doing shelter in place? So the thing I miss the most is watching my boys play their sports. For sure, 100%. Wyatt had just started flag football. He only had one game and a couple of practices. And I was enjoying him getting into that and playing that. And then Austin, if you've watched for a while, you know he plays basketball in a on a club team. So he plays year round. So yeah, I miss watching them play their sports 100%. That is my most missed thing with all of this going on. What do you do with all the socks you knit? 
I wear them. <laughs> no, um, I wear, I wear them. Yeah. But I gift some of them. Um, Wyatt wears hand knit socks, my husband, my mother-in-law. I just did a pair for my dad. I've done a couple pair for him. And the ones I keep for myself, I wear them. I have, I have some of my cabinet here that are kind of, they've never been worn before. And eventually they'll get moved upstairs into where I keep my socks and get, you know, worn. But yeah, I, I wear them. How did you decide you wanted to become a designer? I started out with socks. I just love knitting socks, obviously. Um, and I felt a need for different patterns that I wanted. I just would be knitting and be like, I want to try that. And so it just kind of developed that way through a need for wanting different patterns and having them in my head and wanting them to play out and not being able to find the ones that I had in my head on Ravelry already. So I thought, why not create those? Someone asked, how old are you? You don't even look old enough to have a 13 year old. So I am 33. Um, if you do the math, yes, I, I had my babies young. So yeah, I'm 33. Do you think you'll ever publish a book of all your sock patterns or a book of your patterns? This, this is one I got quite a bit. Um, I've never really thought about doing a book. I don't know. I would not even know where to begin. So at this time, I have no plans to. I've never, never really given any thought to doing a book. Any plans for your next scrappy blanket? So I'm almost done with my corner to corner and I do have a crochet granny stripe going. If you want to see more details on those, you can head over and watch the latest. Well, the latest scrappy Sunday chat had the crochet corner to corner in it. The granny stripe hasn't been shown in a couple of them, I don't think. But anyways, um, my next scrappy blanket, I'm not sure. I do feel the pull to do another cozy memories blanket to start one. I really enjoyed the entire process of that and I love the finished object. So that may be something that I start again. I have been watching Amy of Noble Character Crafts work on her excavation blanket. I think that's the name of it. And I love the look of that. So maybe I'll do one of those. I don't know, I haven't really given much thought because I have the crochet granny stripe as well. And then I do want to start another Cozy Memories. What's your birthday month? My birthday month is September. My birthday is September 15th. Favorite ply for knitting socks? Definitely a four ply. I like a 75-25 superwash merino nylon. That's my favorite blend ply. I just love the feel of that and how it works up into socks. Someone asked, how did you get into knitting? And then how did you get into knitting socks? So I already talked a bit about the knitting. My sister-in-law was learning how to knit and I knew how to crochet and then she started knitting and I'm like, I wanna do that, I can do that. <laughs> so that's kind of how I got started into it. I just was motivated because she had learned how and I wanted to as well. How did I get into knitting socks? That was quite a few years after I even learned to knit. And I don't know, really, I don't remember what made me want to learn to knit socks. I know the first sock that I knit was from a Very Pink Knits YouTube tutorial, and then I had bought her pattern that goes along with it. And I learned that way with a worsted weight sock. But I don't remember, that was so many years ago, I don't remember what made me want to knit them. But then I just kind of fell in love with it. And I started knitting them for the boys and made a couple pairs for friends and eventually started making them for myself and other family members as well. Um, the next question is, I'd love to hear tips for continuing your crafting when you are a stay-at-home mom of two small children. Oh boy, I remember those days when the boys were younger. It's a little bit easier now to get that time in. You know, the boys are older, so they're more independent and all of that, but my biggest tip is just to squeeze it in any moment that you can. And I still do that on days when it seems like we've got a lot going on with the boys and I'm here and there. And like right now with 
supervising that their online schooling gets done. It can get crazy. I just squeeze it in every moment that I can. I, the boys were always kids, even as young kids, that were pretty independent players. They would love when we played with them, of course, in that playtime, but they would also just enjoy playing by themselves. They didn't always want me to be playing with them. They would play by themselves or they would play together. So just doing it any moment that you can. When they were super young, it was if I had like a nap time where I didn't have things going on, I would craft during nap time or after they went to bed. So there were days where they were younger and I didn't get as much done, but yeah, just squeezing it in every moment that I can, even if it's sitting and we're playing a game together or something and I'm working on a sock, you know, when it's not my turn to go, any moment that you can, squeeze that in, do it. Has Wyatt chosen yarn for his next pair of socks? He has not, and I have not made him a pair in a little bit. Um, he hasn't been anywhere that he's worn shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and he's not really one, he doesn't really wear socks around the house. So yeah, he hasn't picked out another pair. Mainly, I think he hasn't really thought of it because he's not wearing shoes and going anywhere right now. What is your favorite color to knit with? I like purples. I like, just trying to see if I have anything around here with that color. I mean, I do have that here. I love anything with like a purple or lavender, anything with like a raspberry kind of a color. That's probably one of my favorites is like a raspberry color. I have a lot of things done in that. Lately, I've been loving anything pink, anything at all. I don't know why or where that has come from, but I'm loving doing anything with pink. How did you start designing knitwear and what was your first pattern? So my first pattern I think was the Austin socks. Might have been the Wyatt socks, one of the two. Those are both free patterns on Ravelry. And I just kind of jumped in and did it. I I don't know, like I talked about a little bit earlier, I've already talked a bit about that, but I just felt a need for, like I had these patterns in my head for socks and I couldn't find them on Ravelry. So I just kind of started doing it. I started out easy, those two were pretty easy and then kind of built up trying out more complex ones that I had thought of. How did you and Eric meet? So Eric and I met when I was a freshman in high school and we met on the crew team. We both rode, we were on the crew team. He was the older boy, but I still remember, and he does not remember <laughs> this day, but I still remember the first day that I saw him and where we were. We were at our the location where we, um, started out our season. Like we would start out our season. The water was too cold to get on the water in the boats. So we would start out working out in a building across from the high school. And I still remember that first day seeing him in there. Maybe that makes me such a nerd, but I still remember that day. And we started out as friends first. We didn't date for a very long time, but yeah, that is where we met. Do you ever get knitter's block when thinking up new patterns? Yes, I do. Um, I don't know, it just, it happens sometimes. And I normally, when that happens, I will completely set aside that design, that yarn, everything for a bit until I'm feeling inspired to try again. And I've found that helps. I, If it happens, I get so frustrated, I can't seem to work through it. So I just completely set it aside for a while. This one was fun. It said, hi there, as a fellow you were here at Mug Collector, I'd love to know how many you have and your favorite one. I should have counted. I will count before I edit this and put the number at the bottom of how many you are here mugs I have. Um, and I have some of the been there and the you are here. So I will put total amount of both of those right here on the screen. My favorite one is definitely West Virginia. That's where I was born and raised. So that one is my absolute favorite. Who taught you to knit? I already talked about that. I taught myself from this book right here. 
were you always a housewife? So I stayed at home right after Eric and I got married. I, before that, I was I worked at a bank as a teller, which was my absolute favorite job. I loved that job. I loved getting to interact with customers every day. I, that was definitely my favorite job I've ever had. And when we got married, I stayed home. And then Eric was in the Air Force that, at that point, and I moved to Florida when we got married. And then when he got out of the Air Force, and then we moved back to West Virginia. I worked the whole time that we lived in West Virginia before he got on with the company that he's on with now. I Just various places. I think I had three different jobs the time we were in West Virginia. I worked at a little cafe that was right by the house we were living in. I worked at a store in the mall. And then eventually I got on at an insurance company and I worked in customer service for that insurance company, which was my least favorite job I've ever had. <laughs> It was awful, 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 horrible. Um, not the company itself. They were fine. It was having some of those calls. The people could be very mean. So that was not my favorite job. What's your favorite sweater or cardigan construction? Bottom up, top down, raglan, seamed, etc. So I think the one I've done the most is top down raglan. So I would probably go with that. I've never done a bottom up one. I don't think, I don't think I have. So yeah, I would probably say top down raglan just because that's the one that I've done the most of. How and in what order did all your cats and dogs come into your family? So we had Gracie first, little Gracie Belle. Then we got Chloe. We adopted her from the shelter when we lived in Yuma. And she was about two and a half, I think, when we adopted her. Then just recently, since we've moved here, we've been here, what, almost, almost two years. So we got Emmy, one of the cats. And then a little while after that, we got Calvin. So that is how we ended up with all four animals. <laughs> when, how, why did you first start your YouTube channel? So I started this quite a while ago. 2017 maybe I could be totally wrong on that that's a total guess September of 2017 is my guess <laughs> um why I just kind of wanted to connect with some other knitters I loved watching podcasts and I felt that it would be a great way to connect with more knitters out there in this online community that I was pretty new to at the time I had just really found out about all of it so I just jumped right in and started yeah I just took the dive, jumped in, decided to do it. Someone asked, how goes your stitching projects? Counted canvas, cross stitch, etc. Because I have mentioned those before and I have great intentions with them, but I have not touched them in forever. Forever. It's been so long. I was thinking... I think it was last weekend. Man, I really want to do a cross stitch project. And I actually ordered a kit for two little pictures for our downstairs bathroom that we've kind of been updating the decor in. And yeah, I, they're not here yet, so I can't start them, but I'm hoping to start them when they come and get them done. They're, I think they're really small pictures. I can't remember the measurements. So they shouldn't take too long. I'm itching to do it. I always get that itch occasionally. I love doing plastic canvas. I love doing cross stitch. Knitting just is like my full on hardcore passion that takes over above everything craft wise. I just love it so much. It's hard to split my time with other things. Someone asked, do you exercise every day? So recently, yes, I used to exercise every day. I took a huge break between, um, I'm going to say October, November of last year to just recently. I had some health stuff last year that I was forced to kind of stop and I had a bit of a recovery time from a procedure. And so that just kind of threw me off and I never started back up, but then I would sporadically do things. But here recently, yes, I've started back with my everyday routine of a HIIT workout. And then I sometimes will do our elliptical, but recently I've just been getting outside and walking because I've been enjoying 
the fresh air and a little bit of sunshine when the sun's first coming up. So doing it every day again and it feels great. Is being a mom your only job or do you have another job? So I consider crazy sock lady stuff a job. Um, a lot of it is considered work. You know, I do my designs, I do stuff on YouTube, all of that. So that's my only other job other than being a stay-at-home mom slash housewife. I do not work outside of the home. Have you always lived in Arizona? Oh goodness, no, we've lived all over. So born and raised in West Virginia, my husband and I both. He's lived other places as well with being in the military, but for me, I've lived in West Virginia, Florida twice, Maryland, North Carolina, and this is my second time living in Arizona. So his job, he's not active duty military any longer, but he works for a company that works with the military. So he, we've moved quite a bit for his job. It's been quite an adventure. What was your first knitting project? What was my, oh, a scarf, scarf. I only did scarves for quite a while, just basic garter stitch scarves. <laughs> I think actually, let me see. It would have been out of this book that I learned out of. Let's see if I can find the pattern. Right there, long and lean scarf. Nope, that wasn't the first one that I did. That was one of the first ones that I did. I know it's in here, right there. So I did this, that's actually what's on the front. Oh my goodness. Okay, this scarf, but I didn't do, it has a little like keyhole thing for you to close it together. I'm pretty sure I did not do that on the first one. I think I just knit really long garter stitch scarves following this pattern. The easy close accent is what it is called. How do you like living in Arizona? Would you like to live around Seattle someday? So I absolutely love Arizona so much. Those summer days can be a bit brutal, yes, but the rest of the year just makes up for it 100%. So I love it. I'm hoping we're here to stay. There are some things I miss about you know, back east, more of a location back east as far as more land and I don't know, but I love everything about Arizona. Love it. Um, Seattle, there's a lot of rain there and I do enjoy an occasional rainy day. I miss them sometimes, but that's a lot of rain around that area, I believe. So I don't know, I'm always open for an adventure, but no plans to move for quite a while. We're staying put and let these boys finish out school knock wood watch i say that and something will come up with his job and we'll have to move do you ever get into a knitting funk and if so what do you do about it oh yes i've gotten into them before um normally casting on a new project helps <laughs> that's probably not maybe the best advice just cast on a new project but i have found that that helps if you cast on something new and you're feeling really inspired and excited about the new knit that'll kind of boost your knitting mojo again and you can get going. And then I get, I'll go through spurts where I get inspired to just finish off everything that's on my needles. All right, that has been about 30 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. I didn't get to all of the questions, but I actually got to a good majority of them. This is something I would love to do regularly. If you guys even enjoyed this, let me know below. And if you did enjoy it and you have some questions that you would like answered, just put them right down below this video. And then maybe I'll try to do another one next month and I'll get any questions that come in from here and then maybe ask again on Instagram if you guys have any more questions that you would like to have answered. They can be knitting related, not knitting related. Ask away below. Thank you guys so much for watching this little Q&A. I hope that you enjoyed it and I will see you guys again soon.